So for those who don't know who I am, my name's Paul Tester. For those who do, you'll have to keep quiet and don't, don't tell the truth. Um, this presentation is, as you can see on the title, Engaging the Mission in New Ways to, Across and From Latin America. Just to give you a very um, brief introduction to, uh, to who I am, um, I, together with my wife Sarah, uh, we serve uh, in Peru. We went there originally as mission partners with the Church Mission Society uh, from the UK and uh, have been there for 12 years. We, are, um, we went originally to be involved, well, me particularly with youth ministry. That grew into discipleship work. And then a couple of years ago, I took on the new role within Church Mission Society, uh, which is uh, called being the Mission Development Manager for Latin America. Basically, I look after our work in Latin America, but also looking to develop our work across and from Latin America to other parts. And that's what we're going to be talking about a little bit today. So if I can just start by giving you uh, perhaps a little bit of a, a vision, uh, a vision for the future. Okay, and I've got a very nice picture up there of things going all over the place. Um, you've been hearing a lot in, uh, the, in New Wineskins about mission being about everywhere to everywhere nowadays, uh, rather than being from one particular part to the rest. And, uh, and so if we can kind of suggest that in the future we might start seeing a lot more of Argentinians, for instance, in Spain. I've tried to do it as an ABC, so there you go. Argentinians in Spain, or Brazilians in Britain, or uh, the sea of the community of mission, um, uh, in, uh, causing an impulse to mission from Latin America to all around the world. So I hope that's kind of a, uh, a, a, an exciting vision for the future. Um, so, uh, but we're going to come back to this, because it's not just the future. If I can go back to the past, just very briefly, this is obviously not a photograph, but an image of when CMS began 220 years ago. So we're quite an old uh, mission agency. We grew out, and our DNA, our history and DNA, comes from uh, the roots of a group of people who met together to pray, to reflect on what God was doing, and then to seek to follow his call on their lives. And that led to a movement which, within the UK led to the abolition of slavery in Great Britain, the transformation of the society there, um, but also an impulse to a push to mission in other parts. Uh, and since 1799, uh, when this first got going, uh, tens of thousands of missionaries have been sent out by Church Mission Society all around the globe. But we also have in uh, CMS in, in Great Britain that the, the, the history of SAMS and, and the great sort of pioneer of SAMS is Captain Alan Gardner who in 1851 um, with his heart to reach the indigenous peoples of Tierra del Fuego died on the beach um, attacked by the people he went to evangelise uh, and starved because his supply ship didn't turn up. Um, but yet his diaries and his diaries he wrote things like this great and marvellous the loving kindness is of my gracious God unto me he has preserved me hitherto and for four days although without bodily food without any feeling or hunger of hunger or thirst and those sort of inspirational words that he wrote in his diaries that were found after his death by the, the ships that eventually got there um, though when that message got back to the UK uh, it inspired a movement of people in mission uh, to South America and that work began um, with uh, work with indigenous peoples uh, originally the Yaganes in the south of Argentina uh, and then up into the Paraguay and Chaco and other places and we still have uh, a few people serving with the indigenous church across Latin America um, the church is actually maturing and we'll see a little bit more of that later but we still have people who have spent um, perhaps not almost as long as, as Russ and Heidi, um, serving in Latin America, learning the language, being part of the culture, uh, serving in places which are really challenging uh, to live and to, um, uh, and to be in. And also historically, I'm trying to whip through the history because I want to get to the future, um, serving in, uh, from chaplaincy churches around South America and then turning uh, those into missional opportunities. And we still actually have people in one or two places, uh, in here in this particular one in Rio de Janeiro, um, where we have people who are, yes, serving in, in what was a historically a British community, but actually now trying to turn that into a missional opportunity with the international community around it, serving with all of the international community, refugees, this is a particular event to reach out to those who have come from other parts. And that work then grew in, into urban mission, 
uh, serving in the big urban centres around Latin America, uh, and um, and that's that's repeated across lots of South America. This particular photo, um, in fact, uh, Mr. Raphael, you'll recognise one of the yes, members. Of you'll recognise one of the people here. This photo was taken in Valparaíso in a church that was planted by a CMS uh, mission partner or CMS mission partners, but has now been handed over to local leadership um, and is supported in part. Uh, Gabriel here is a local partner who's been commissioned to um, to plant a new church from that church that has been planted. So the idea, uh, and you know, is that, is that actually um, whilst we might provide an impulse to mission in uh, in an urban centre, actually the the push is towards local leadership and a, and a church that is not just planted but is planted to multiply and to uh, reach others. And we're seeing, in general terms. Uh, a church that is um, slowly growing uh, and that is locally moving towards being locally led. There are still plenty of examples where that's not fully the case, but um, this photo was taken. Uh, this is Bishop Avalino Apaleo, who was a Sam's local partner for many years. Um, he's Chilean, he's now a bishop within the Chilean church, um, but he's actually speaking at the ordination of two indigenous bishops uh, in northern Argentina. And we're slowly seeing that growth in uh, local leadership, and it's certainly something that we want to continue uh, working together with the Latin American Church to raise up and build capacity, raise up leaders uh, across the continent. So you might say, well, okay, that's all very fascinating. You give me a very brief history of, of CMS's work in, on Sam's work in Latin America, but what now? And now I just want to kind of set that context um, because what God is doing now in the world. Um, in some ways turns things upside down. I don't know if you've seen the maps like that. Uh, that's actually a photo of the map that's, still, that's on my office wall. Um, for, the, for many of us that looks like it's the wrong way up. I would like to argue actually it's the right way up perhaps. Um, we've heard lots over the last couple of days about the change in the centre of world Christianity, moving from what was the global north to the global south. Uh, we've uh, heard about actually how God is raising up mission movements uh, and uh, and, and that the, the kind of modern missionary movement is, is changed in terms of its direction. Um, it's now much more everywhere to everywhere. I was uh, recently at a, a Comibam conference. Comibam is a, an umbrella, umbrella missions network across Latin America. And the figures they're talking about in terms of missionaries who have been sent out from their own local context uh, to other parts across the region and then beyond internationally, we're talking 20,000 plus. Um, so it's not an insignificant mission movement, quite the opposite, it's a big one. And uh, there's certainly uh, a passion and a heart for reaching some of the most difficult places. So just to give a, get, put, put CMS into that context, we've kind of gone from a situation where we, we were sort of a, a very, um, uh, one of the major senders from uh, the, the global north, to a context where soon, over a number of period of years, it, within that sort of network, a number of other agencies were born, I would say still in the global north, if you like, in Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, North America, and, uh, and they, they are um, part of the same sort of family and network. You'll see SAMS from uh, USA, uh, CMS Australia. We, work, we, we connect together in, in a network of mission. But that's still the global north. One of the uh, concerns that um, uh, missionaries have, have shared uh, is that in their going and serving, they may have given to the, the church in the nation a vision for their nation, but not so much a vision for going to all of the nations. Um, what, uh, what we hope to see is actually a, a uh, organizations that bring about a prophetic call to mission challenges the church to go beyond its natural boundaries uh, uh, beyond its culture beyond its context and to think what that pioneering historic pioneering spirit of CMS and SAMS that were, that arose many years ago what that might look like in the context of, of today and so over the last few years um, other organizations within this sort of network and family have begun to emerge and so in Africa about just over 10 years ago CMS Africa was founded uh, and Canon Moses who spoke on uh, Thursday evening 
leads that organization. It's a, an African organization led by Africans uh, and with a focus on mission, particularly in their region, but then also thinking about mission elsewhere. And similarly, a few more years later, Asia CMS was born as well. And that, again, is led by uh, Nam Chen, who is a Malaysian, uh, and, uh, and they, they work particularly in their region, uh, but with a view to, in the future, also mobilizing a mission to other parts. So within that context and looking at that, that map, there's an obvious space. I expect some of you can see where I'm kind of going with this. What would it look like in what in the UK used to be termed the forgotten continent in Latin America? What might uh, a CMS SAMS entity start to look like? And that's what I've been tasked, to, tasked with looking at and helping to develop. An organization, an entity that helps to promote mission across the region and from the region to other parts, connecting in with the movement of Latin Americans in mission that we are already seeing in many places. And to call the church in a way prophetically beyond uh, its natural focus on its local mission, whilst that's important, to also have eyes for the wider global church and a global call. So if someone asked me, oh, She's here, actually. So over lunch, do you not feel overwhelmed with that challenge to connect with a, a regional mission movement and send people around the world and all these sorts of things? Well, how to start? Where to begin? Well, I think, actually, the founders of CMS got that very, very right. To start with a community of mission, a group of people who uh, feel God's call on their lives, who want to meet together to pray, to reflect, and then to, on that list, after listening to God, to participate with him and join in with what he's doing in his mission. And that's where we're beginning as well, forming a community of mission who seek to follow God's call, uh, who pray, and then uh, reflecting and participating in what God is doing. As I begin this role, I think there are areas where we need to focus as well. One of those is, in the, is to continue being part of giving and receiving uh, with the rest of the global church. So yes, to receive where necessary from other parts of the world uh, in terms of building the capacity of the church, helping the church to grow its uh, leadership, helping to uh, catalyze for mission, and particularly discipling uh, others in that missional call. And there's a particular focus in, in what we're doing and engaging with the emerging generations, the, the younger uh, generation that is emerging, and discipling a missional heart within that group of Latin Americans. And then finally, to share the gifts of the Latin American church with other parts, um, to enable across that network of agencies and organizations the opportunity for when God calls people to be able to go or to send uh, resources or to share uh, their, their spirit, if you like, uh, across that network, and to facilitate that sending of people uh, of, of resources of prayer around that mission network. So when I shared that vision at the beginning, or that ABC, if you like, of mission in a new way, what I want to say is actually that is not just something out there in the future, but something that is very clearly happening already. And just to illustrate that, um, to show a few people who are um, showing that. So I said Argentinians in Spain, I did it deliberately because we are connected with Argentinians in, in Spain and others in other Latin Americans in Spain who are um, serving in, in this particular case in church planting. This is Daniel, who's uh, Argentine. He's serving in the Basque Country in Spain. He's planted a church in Spanish in the Basque Country, but now he's planting one that uses the Basque language. Um, so a, a really encouraging and exciting work that he's doing. I also mentioned Brazilians in Britain. Uh, I know we've got at least one Brazilian here today. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a great move from the Brazilian church, and those of you who were listening earlier to the presentation about Recife will know, hear about some of the excitement of, in the movement of God in those places. Um, this is a photo of two Brazilians, one of whom coordinates CMS's work uh, with the, its kind of mission community in the, in the UK, and uh, one who's a Brazilian pastor, one of, a pastor of one of seven Brazilian churches with, within Oxford, which is where CMS UK is based. Uh, and exciting to see how those, what have started as kind of diaspora churches, are beginning to engage much more in mission uh, in their communities uh, with what 
you might call the uh, original inhabitants. I don't know quite the, the indigenous English. You know what I mean? Uh, and so, and that, so that's exciting. And, and to be able to engage with that and help in, in sharing, thinking about mission internationally, but using diaspora or through diaspora. And finally, the community and mission, as I mentioned, that's actually something that we're already working on. And I just put this photo on just because it, it brings in kind of two elements of, of types of groups that were people that we're working with. Veronica here is, is part of the, and you can see the map in the background upside down, just to show that it is on the map, up on the wall. Uh, Veronica here is from a church in Buenos Aires. They support a number of people who are serving a mission outside of their national context, including one of whom, this is Noemi, who's uh, preparing to go to Thailand. Um, and so they're examples of the sorts of people that we're working with and helping to uh, connect with, facilitating their and catalyzing for their uh, role in, in mission around them the world and it's something that we want to continue to do uh, to join in with what God is doing across Latin America uh, in, in his, his, his call on Latin Americans in mission globally. And we feel that this is just the beginning, this is just the beginning for us, we know God has much greater plans and we're excited about what he wants to do. So this is something that is to be continued as I say there. So I think my time is up in terms of presentation, uh, of course I'm more than happy to answer questions now. Um, if you want any more details afterwards, you can go on to uh, churchmissionsociety.org and find out uh, a little bit more about CMS. Uh, and if you'd like to connect more, my card is on the table at the back. And do feel free to, to take one of those uh, and, and be in touch. There we go. Can I, are there any questions or thoughts about what I've shared? Maria Isabel, yeah, of course. I'm feeling late, so yep. I know you already talked about it, I'm sorry for that. Um, my question is, how do you can, um, I am a Colombian, yeah. I have been missionary as a 33 years mm -hmm. in, different, in different countries, uh, but I have been supported by sons who is American mm -hmm. mission. So, how is the projection mm -hmm. in Latin America to become like senders? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, there's a, a few things in there. I think in, in some senses, as the model that you've kind of shared, where actually sometimes it's, it's, it's right to share the resources of the global church in that way. So where maybe the North might have uh, the financial means, but not necessarily uh, the, the right people, and they, they need that participation of Latin Americans in the mission in those parts, then I don't think there's anything wrong with that sharing of resources in that way. So, um, that said, I think actually um, we need to think about the right models for, uh, for sending from Latin America. Um, we hear um, all, all sorts of stories of uh, Latin Americans who have been sent out in mission globally by their local church. Yes, yes, of course we'll support you and then two months down the line are wondering how on earth they're going to survive um, and that's a story that has been repeated in many cases so I do think that in some cases we also need to look at if we've got the right models in some cases it may be um, you, uh, the sense of professionals who are able to uh, find work in other parts who, who live there and, and their, their mission is carried out in part through their work and then in also in the way that they participate um, outside of their work as people um, I think the engagement with diaspora around the world, I mean there are huge numbers of Latin Americans in, in lots of parts, Europe, North America particularly, but, uh, but in other parts as well. Uh, and I think encouraging people to think about how, uh, how they can, uh, can serve in mission uh, as part of that, that movement is also important. Um, and I think also um, that there are places in Latin America that can actually sustain the old model uh, uh, I think there are some churches that can do that and they do do that um, uh, and some of the bigger churches uh, across Latin America are doing that um, it's fascinating when you start talking about this people say oh well our church for instance I know I was in Honduras and uh, one of the, well our church we've got missionaries on five continents planting churches um, you know that's really exciting and they sort of support that um, through their own tithing and giving but I think we need to be creative and I think we need to not be um, settled on just, just one model Because I know in our culture there's no a sense of gift. Yeah. <laughs> so it needs to be valid educating people for yeah. giving and, and for so it's 
and it's a lack of trust. Mm -hmm. So how is handled with this, in, in mm -hmm. the, especially in the Anglican Church? Yeah, so there's, there's a couple of things there. I think um, in terms of changing culture within the church, I think that's important. Um, so actually, one of the um, biggest challenges, I think, is actually is changing the, the mindset within the church. Um, CMS Africa, who I mentioned earlier, one of their big, their, in fact, their slogan on the, on the logo is um, uh, renewed mindsets, transformed communities. Mm -hmm. Uh, and a lot of what they do is actually uh, work with people, uh, communities or churches, to help them discover the abundance that God has give them, given them and help them to think about how they use that. Um, and that has had a massive impact in, in lots of people's lives. Um, so part of it is about, I think, about changing culture. Um, that said, I recognise the limitations and the challenges within, within Latin America. I think the other, um, the other part that you mentioned about that kind of trust and, uh, and relationship, I, um, I, I think part of that comes through relationship. I mean, relationship is so important, isn't it, in, in, in Latin America. It's much more important than what you put on a piece of paper. Um, so, uh, so actually developing that relationship, and if uh, some, some, something like a CMS in Latin America can help bring some of that trust and that support um, and through building of good relationships, uh, through that building of trust, then, uh, then I would hope that that would also be uh, a good way of going. And so some of the people that we're, we're connecting with, like some of the photos that I showed and some of the others, um, that's part of that. It's kind of building up, a, um, starting to connect and, and, and have a few trying to think of the right word, uh, sorry, my, sometimes my English is worse than my Spanish, um, to, to a few kind of uh, prototypes, sounds very robotic, but a few, a few examples um, where, where you, you can actually demonstrate that, 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 uh, that you are faithful, that you are trustworthy in what you commit to, uh, and hopefully that will also then allow people to think about their, their trust in their giving and their support. Um, we've had one or two uh, already um, churches that have given financially towards it, which is quite exciting. Um, so, um, from within Latin America, I mean. Um, now, that might only be small, it's a small start, but actually that's quite exciting and quite encouraging as well. Anyone else? Are you having good reception when you go around meet with different people? Yes. It's fascinating, actually. Uh, I won't get too specific. <laughs> but, actually, but actually, no, I think, um, I think in general terms, uh, there, there is a good response. But, you know, we're, we're working specifically uh, or particularly with the Anglican Church. Um, I think when I was when I was in, uh, when I was appointed into this role, um, the, the, the primate, Greg Venables, was on the interviewing kind of committee if you like so there was a connection with the province and um, we had a, a, a first meeting with the bishops I think Raphael was there when we were in Peru yeah. when we talked about this as well so there's a, there's certainly a, an official kind of backing if you like from that that part um, we and, and I, th I think at a more ground level if you like uh, when you start expressing some of this vision there is uh, there are people who are naturally drawn to it because it's something that um, that that they've they've seen in other parts or they've felt a call to, uh, and you become so, or, or a kind of a focal point for it if you like a, a sense of uh, a, a place where kind of people start to connect with you about it. Um, so in those terms, positive. I think the challenge uh, is a little bit linked to what we were talking about that kind of. Um, uh, the renewed mindsets, if you like, that changing of culture, um, because it's one thing to kind of be enthusiastic verbally about it, but actually when it starts costing money, time, uh, prayer, people's commitment to it, um, that's when the kind of rubber hits the road, and I think that's, that's something that we're still going to be working through. Did you have a question? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um... We had a, a very dynamic young lady from another church who felt called to serve in Palestine. Mm -hmm. And we were part of a group of churches in Santa Cruz that came together and supported her mm -hmm. in terms of finance and prayer and so on. Mm -hmm. So she came back and, and she kept in touch with us um, through her 
newsletters. Very unusual lady, very dynamic. I am seeing a trend that most of these missionaries are ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Almost always. Okay, so my question to you is, yeah. what special gifts do these do the women bring into the mission? Wow, that's maybe an you're interesting not, maybe question. Maybe ladies that, <laughs> what, I mean, what, what magic, because this particular yeah. lady yeah. was really dynamic, you know, yeah. but she didn't. I mean, I, she could, like, I, I saw, I, when I heard her speak and when I heard her, when I yeah. spoke to her, gosh, I, I, I felt, let's ordain her, you know, make her, make her a pastor. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> that's very interesting you should say make her a pastor. I no, I, I, that's I, I, another see, reason so many yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, have I'm, gone I'm, into the mission field. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah, like we're a. Not, we're not good enough to be a. Yeah, exactly. I'm speaking like a, like a churchman now, you know. A yeah. Church, churchman. I asked myself, maybe we should make them. Okay, do away with all that, you know, funny body ideas about a clergyman, a pastor. Make them, you know, bring them in the life of the church. Make them pastors and, you know, break the traditional model of a pastor and somehow honor their calling to the mission field, you know. Yeah. And do it through the church, you see. Yeah. Not so much through the mission field, not so much through the mission aid. Aid, so yeah. 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 I, think, um, I think there's a couple of things in there. I mean... It, in Chile, in fact, uh, the Anglican Church in Chile supports uh, Veronica, uh, who's serving in India. And again, there's another example of a woman being uh, called in mission. Um, I, th I think there's a couple of things. We, we do tend to see, um, I think even, even in Latin America, generally speaking, we see more of the church is actually female. I'd be interested to see if yeah. you think that's the case in Bolivia. I think whilst the leadership is often male, um, the there does tend to be a, a, a larger proportion that is female. So there, there may be just the law of averages in there as well. But uh, actually, um, the church perhaps in some ways engages more uh, with, with with women than men. In no, where I'm going with this, see, the church has been robbed of mission dynamism precisely because women and, oh, and also men, you know, who see their, their calling in terms of me going and the church figuring out how to send me. Right. How do you get them into the life of the church and be a part of the leadership of the church and then from there we send them. Okay. So yeah. for me that's yeah. positive, you know, it's like mm -hmm. me, you see. I mean, I'm a hardcore cl uh, clergyman, but mm -hmm. at heart I'm a missionary, you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, why can't we do this? Why can't we do the same with women too? Yeah. And in an ideal sense, the the I see the role of the mission agency not to be the 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 way that you yeah. go into mission, True. but actually to be a, uh, a, a, a it, it's that if you like that prophetic side to the church that yeah, when the yeah. because there's a tendency when it's not there that the church turns in on itself, and I think that that's the danger. I think we need to be. Um, making sure that we have a church that has a vision, not just here, but globally. Um, and, uh, and so I think that's, that, that's a key part. So um, actually what would be great is if the church felt it was actually sending out its best, if you like, yes, and including the men and the women. Yeah. Um, I, and and, and I, I was sharing uh, about when Paul and Barnabas are raised up and sent out, they talk about the, 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 there are five leaders of the church and they send out 40% of their leadership uh, in mission um, I'd like to challenge every church to think about doing that don't think we get very far but we could try we could certainly pray for it uh, and uh, and yes you're right I think that the, the, the leadership does need to include uh, include women amongst it so the challenge is up to us to give space to women to lead you yeah, absolutely in the executive I would <laughs> agree with that 100%. <laughs> <laughs> you can debate about which format that might take, but yeah. And, and all of when CMS talks about uh, mission, we talk about local and global. I've kind of majored on the global here because I think actually in Latin America we, we do have a sense of mission glo locally, mm -hmm. um, uh, particularly. In fact, in, strangely enough, in the UK, our experience is more the other way around. We always thought of mission as something you do over there than something that you do 
do a, do a, do in your natural in your day to day life in that home. Um, so perhaps there's a there's a mix in there and a challenging on both on both sides. Um, I think we need to make sure that it's both, uh, both and, um, and we spent a lot of time looking at how we do, how we f encourage and catalyse mission in the UK as well.